yeah. And Justine, just to, to come to you, we talked to David and, and Jeff there about maybe some of the long lasting change that will come around on the back of this. Clearly, another project that you have, have been you know, advocating for a long, long time is social mobility and the social mobility pledge coming out of that, that that you and David worked on and are continuing to work on. That's been over two years now. I think seven million people covered by it and you know, over 500 mm. organizations uh, backing that. I mean, what do you think the the long lasting, if you like, leveling up social mobility change could be or should be? Mm. Well, I think clearly we launched the social mobility pledge because there's such a big problem on inequality of opportunity. And that isn't just bad for individuals. It's bad for the whole country because effectively we've had an economy that's traditionally just worked almost with one of its four pistons firing. And, you know, it's never been more important now, especially given what we're going to, as it were, invest in tackling coronavirus to have a version of the UK economy where everybody can help power it forward. But that does mean quite a different version of Britain in the future to the one we've had in the past. And so social mobility and removing the barriers that that hold people back from, in a sense, pursuing a better, a better life path than they otherwise can, that really, really matters now. And so I think there'll be a lot more focus on it. I've always welcomed the fact that Boris Johnson's government has put levelling up right at the heart of its strategy, but it really needs to now. And I think the big challenge for the government, in a sense, is can it be bold enough and radical enough to make the steps it needs to? And that means changing how government works. It means changing how Treasury looks at things. But also for businesses, there's a real opportunity to say, well, where do they fit into this levelled up Britain because if if businesses can step up to the challenge in the same way they have um, to help the country tackle coronavirus if they can now step up to the challenge of helping a country level up and work out how the decisions they take really impact those wider communities that they're part of then actually this could be a real moment where we take a step forward and, and actually finally allow our country to shift up a gear. You know, we've had a long standing problem with low productivity, too high inequality, and, and those things actually go together. So yeah. we now have a, a golden opportunity, I think, to really radically think about how do we fix mm. them simultaneously? And if we can, it could be a win win for communities, a win win for businesses, a win win for the country as a whole. But we absolutely have to seize the moment because these sorts of paradigm shifts whatever you want to call them don't come along that long if you look at when we've really tackled inequality and transformed Britain um, in the past it's been after world wars and and actually historians will tell you that these are the moments when you really get to refashion and reshape a country so we can't lose it and it's also why I think the work that we've been doing on the C19 business pledge and the social mobility pledge really matters because they give us a brilliant coalition of big Mm -hmm. businesses and also small ones who are willing to be part of that and what we're saying to all of them is that they all need to have an opportunity action plan coming out of this they all need to be able to answer the question not just what did you do to help Britain get through coronavirus but what, what did you do afterwards to help it meet the next challenge which was leveling up this country yeah I mean, you, you were in um, the government with Theresa May, and of course, she came in saying that her priority was a country that works for everyone and then got completely overtaken by events, which we see happening so often. But again, w- one of the things that you've said over the years, quite rightly, is that in Britain, talent is spread evenly, but opportunity is not. Opportunity is, is um, centred, it, it's particularly in, in London. But just like we're doing now, and as David talked about, a different way of working, a different way of interacting going mm-hmm. forwards. I mean, this this has to be a moment. If you're going to level up and, and you know, if that is the, this government's long term mission, then these are the right circumstances to be to be really having a go at that and not be allowing itself to be taken over by events. If, if, not, if not now, when? And yeah. the bottom yeah. line is when the economy's going well and there's full employment, there's almost an attitude that, well, things are fine. Nothing needs to change. We're doing really well. Thank you. But if when the economy is doing less well and we face some challenges and we've got this kind of level of challenge, if then we don't choose to fix this, then you really have a question about when will we ever get around to this? But we absolutely have to. It's at the heart of a lot of the problems. And you look at where coronavirus has had the worst 
effect. Mm. It's actually been in the communities that are most disadvantaged. So health inequalities and social mobility go hand in hand. It all ties. If you have healthier lives, you've got more successful lives, you've got a more successful economy. All of this is about fixing a virtuous circle for Britain to be successful in the future. I think yeah. the great news in a way is that companies can be absolutely at the centre of doing that. They don't actually have to wait for a minister in Whitehall to take a decision or a law to be passed. It's about the decisions businesses can take, like True Potential, that they want to run themselves differently to be part of the solution. And, and I'm hoping that we can really encourage a lot more businesses to, to do that over the coming weeks and months, because it's absolutely crucial that they do.